Hi YouTube fam, how you doing? The tutorial you're about to watch is a pretty long webinar. Um, we held it in our close community. It's basically for beginners in Adalo, how to get started with Adalo, you know, know all the uh, things that Adalo can do. And then at the end of the day, we we started a, a, a project where I showed where I showed um, where I showed participants how to build a learning management application so you would see me go back and forth you know ask questions in a group you know just have some side communication so um hope you don't mind but it's going to show you how to build a learning management system not everything but you're going to see the basics and it comprises of the setting up the database you know transferring data from one screen to another one and you also learn how to you know put a paywall you know, somehow, when it comes to being learning management application, you want to put a paywall and say, if you pay, I want you to show this. So we'll show you how to use some sort of conditional visibility for what you're doing. And um, at the end of the day, when you're done with watching this course and you think like, I want to be part of a community, so you can click on the link below, join the community, and you'll be part of majority of our, of our, um, of our webinar. So it's head every Saturday, it, um, every Saturday, yeah. 8 p.m. GMT, 8 p.m. plus 1 GMT. So that's when we hold our webinar every Saturday. So, uh, you know, just go ahead and watch it. Leave your comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started with the, uh, yeah, let's get started with our introduction to Adalo and building a uh, project. Thank you. Recorded. Uh, so I'm just going to start again for the YouTube algorithm. So hi, welcome to another tutorial. So this during this workshop, I'm going to be showing you how to build a learning management system using Adalo. So don't forget, if you have any question, you leave it in the chat section and I'll do well to answer you. So this is Adalo, like we've recently established in other classes. It's a tool that enables you to build mobile apps without writing code. Uh, I've been building with Adalo for a while now, and I can tell you that it's super, super interesting and super easy. Uh, one thing that, that, that really got me amazed this weekend was that was the fact that you can build a fintech application with Adalo. You know, those type of apps that someone can send money, pay money, you know, stuff like that. You can really use Adalo to build such. And it was, <clears throat> it was just a banger for me and it was a game changer for me. And I like that, you know, I just like that feeling of, feeling of being able to build something beautiful with Adalo. So don't forget, you can always leave your message. My phone is open, so I'm streaming. My phone is open. I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Um, I thought I was sharing my screen before now, but I'm going to start sharing my screen. So, um, so, um, so I'm sharing my screen. You'll be able to see me now. So please let me know if you can see my screen in the comment section. Frank, thank you very much. Let me know if you can see my screen in the comment section. I'm sharing my screen now. Um, Zos, welcome. Sunday, thank you very much for joining. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Frank, you can see my screen. Thank you. So this is Adalo. It's um, it's super easy to super easy to sign up. Uh, if you have an account, go ahead and sign up. But I'm just going to log in since I have an account already. um so this is this is what we did the last time remember we created the blog the last time and with just a couple of screens i think one two three four five screens we were able to create something useful so if i want to start up another app i'll simply click here screw down i have a lot of apps i've created before so don't blame me i'll click on create a new application and I'll click on native. That's what I want to create. You can create desktop apps with Adalo, but um, it's not so flexible. So the reason because this is not using the, the it's not the the desktop app is not making use of the flexbus of it's not making use proper use of the flexbus component. So when you create um, desktop application with Adalo, it doesn't. It doesn't fold like you want it to fold. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't resize to mobile like you want it to do. But if you are building something for desktop only, then you can use the desktop web to build it. But this time we're just going to be building for the mobile. So you click on the nest. Uh, Adalo gives you some uh, template, but I would say if you're new and you you're looking forward to building no code for 
clients and you're looking forward to doing this as a professional, I think it's always good that you get just get started with a blank template because lots of lots of clients that you're going to be working with their apps will be different a lot of time their apps will be different the color will be different you know the exact nitty-gritty of what they want to do will be different so it's good you start with a blank template but if you're very sure that whatever you if you're very very sure about what you want to do why not you just go ahead and you know um, you can just go ahead and do this and start with a blank template and you, it will save you time yeah definitely will so the name of our app is going to be an LMS. So we just say no code for the five LMS. LMS means learning management system. And I'll pick a color. So when you're picking a color, you want to do this rule. It's called the 60, 20, uh, the 60, 30, 10 rule. The way it works is that you want to use a 60% a 60 or maybe 70, 20, 10. Any way you want to call it is fine. You want to say, I'm going to use... Pick one dominant color, one very dominant color for my application. Then I'm going to use another color for some major touch point, and I'm going to use another color again, which is called the ascent color a lot of time, 10% of the time. So you pick a dominant color that you're going to be using 70, uh, 60 or 70% of the time. You pick another color that you're going to be using 20% of the time, and you pick another color that you're going to be using 10% of the time. But it's super good and super useful if you decide to use just one color for your application. Because it's not always about the color, it's mostly about the functionality and how the user experience uh, drive. For me, I always like to use black and white because you can never go wrong with black and white. It's not very complex. Black, white, and one major color. So um, this time I'm going to pick, um, if you're using, and also if you're using dark mode, if you're using dark mode, definitely you have to pick white. I mean, you can create your, your, your application to run two ways. You can have a dark mode and you can have a light mode. It's just changing screens and it's the same thing. So I'm going to pick, uh, what color do I pick now? I'm going to pick a blue. This is, mm, okay. I'm going to pick this. But one way you could find two colors that will go very well together is to use the Canva color wheel. If you use the Canva color wheel, you can um, you can really figure out a color that works for you. Say, for example, we I take this purple color and go to Canva color wheel. Just go to the Canva color wheel. Click on the Canva color wheel like so. And um, I'll paste that color in there. And then I can find another color that works perfectly for me. I'll just, you know, paste it right there. And you can see the opposite. So this opposite color, yeah, thank you very much, Frank. Color that Adobe really works too. So this opposite color works very well for the application, but you might not like it. So you can choose a monochromatic, or you can choose a, you know, a triadric, and just pick one of them. So I'm just gonna pick the middle one because I feel like it's good to be in the middle or something. So I'm just gonna pick this one and put it right there and say, okay, this is this is gonna be the color of our. Of our, um, of our no code application. And you can see that one thing that Adalo gives you, it gives you these two screens. They're not very compulsory. Funny, as funny as it sounds, they're not very compulsory. It's not compulsory that your app must have a sign up, must have a login. But it's just this is the convention. This is the kind of convention that people use. It. So it's not very compulsory that people must have your app must have a sign up or must have a login there are some applications that don't require sign up or login you've seen some some of those kind of application on the play store before it doesn't require sign up doesn't require a login especially if you're building some sort of a blogging application like linda ikeji is doing uh it doesn't ha it doesn't require so you must not put a login or a sign up there are some application you want to use if you put a login people people run away they won't do anything with you say for example you're building a money manager People who, are, who want to manage their money, they're not looking forward to signing up. They just want to put their records there and get out. So what you want to do, you want to hide the login button, hide the sign-up button, and just allow people record what, what they've spent for today and just get out. That's what you want to help them do. Uh, Dominic, thank you very much. I see you're inviting people uh, to come listen. So if you know, um, thank you. Really appreciate it. So if you know somebody... Um, who you think will benefit from this class, feel free. We, we'll hold this every weekend, every every Saturday evening. Feel free to invite someone to come learn how to build stuff with no code. Um, Dominic, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. 
So these are first screen, these are second screen, these are third screen. One screen that I always love to build all the time is the welcome screen. You know, um, if you're a designer or if you've designed before, there's a welcome screen, there's some sort of a splash screen. You know, you want to tell your apps, you want to tell your users, this is what my app really does. And this is what you will get when you come to, when you're using my app. So um, to do that, all I have to do is to click on the plus sign and add a new screen. Add a new screen, blank screen. So this is what I did. I'm going to do it again. Click on the plus sign, add a new screen, and say blank screen. It's going to ask me what type of screen do I want to add. I could, um, I, I can call it anything I want to call it, but it's okay. So I'll just say welcome screen. This doesn't affect what you can do with the screen at all. I'm going to say welcome screen. Then I would say create screen. Yeah, this is the welcome screen. Then what I want to do. See, one thing that you want to avoid is that you want to avoid perfection when you're building your Adalo application. It's something that you want to avoid really good. Avoid it. Avoid it like a plague, perfection. Especially if you're trying to build something for yourself. If you wait for it to be perfect, you're definitely not going to build anything at all. You're not going to build anything. You're just going to be here. You're going to be here for as long as possible, but you're not going to build anything. So it's something you want to avoid. Just think of your app as work in pro pro progress. Somebody said, uh, I saw it on somebody's status today, that perfection are just a bunch of excuses, a bunch of reasons why you never want to finish something. So just look at your app as work in progress. That's one thing I love about no code. The fact that you can always come back here and make changes. You can come back here, make changes, upload it to Play Store, and nobody will die. Trust me, you'll just be all right. You'll feel good about it. So let's, let's go ahead and build our splash screen. So um, this is the splash screen right here. This one that, that I'm in right now, this one. This is the screen I want to use as much splash screen. So I'll click on it. I'll go to my edit style. I'll scroll down. I want to change the background to the main color. So I just change the background to the main color right there. So you can see what I did, right? Then what I'll do is that I'll click on the plus sign. I want to put an image in the middle. So I want to put an image in the middle. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna screw up and say image. Just drag an image and put it put it right here. It's fine where you put it. Don't worry, it's okay. The 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 the, the Adalo has some sort of a some sort of a, you you can see this plus sign that we have here. This rule some sort of a ruler that we have here. It enables you to position stuff wherever you want to position it. You can see I'm positioning this in the middle, right here, and it's 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 just in the middle. You can really tell that it's in the middle of things because of this rule that I have here. You can see this rule is telling you where, where it's the middle. So what I want to do is that I want to look for an image. So I could find an image from the database or I can find an image from uh, my PC. It's just going to stay. And meanwhile, everything that you're doing here is uploaded on AWOX. So you don't have to worry about saving stuff. You don't have to save anything. It's saved automatically, and you can always come back and start from where you stopped, irrespective of network connection or if your, if your PC go off. You don't have to save anything. You never, ever have to click save when you're doing your building with the Dalo. So I'm just going to upload something. Uh, let me find uh, a logo. It's not going to be like an LMS, but let me just upload something. Let me upload something, a PNG file. So it's good you upload a transparent file. It's super good you upload some sort of a transparent file. But let me see if I will have something here. Oh, this is, this is not good. <laughs> I doubt if this is going to work. But let me just put it here. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. But <laughs> so it's not, it's, not, it's not really nice. But this is for a payment. Uh, this is a, for a fintech application that I'm working on. But I'm pretty sure it's not really going to work. But you, I'm pretty sure you get the gist. This is what I'm trying to do. So this is... This is what I'm trying to do. So you can see anybody who comes to your app like this feel like, wow, this app is good, it's great, and it's something that I want to, you know, I want to use. And then to make this your first screen that people see when they come to the application, you click here like so, yeah, and go to your screen. Click on this place where you edit your screen, and it, it is going to ask you what type of navigation are you are you what type of navigation is this screen. So when we click on it, we would say it's a welcome screen. So it's a welcome screen that people see when they are not logged in. It's a welcome screen. 
and when you go advanced right here you can actually time this screen so you can actually time this screen that when it's past like one or two seconds it should move to another screen so that's for another day that's something we can explore sometime later you can time it you can say hey if a user spends like one second on this screen i want you to move to another screen so that's how um you seen when you open an app on the play store you can see that it shows you the um, the welcome screen or it tells you hey welcome and the next thing you're seeing that it's moving to another screen so that's how it's done so this is the welcome screen this is the first screen the user would see and then you can see right here in the right part of my screen that this is the home screen the user sees when they log into the application. So this is the home screen and this is the welcome screen. And then let's go ahead and create some sort of an onboarding screen. Oh, forgive me. Let's create some sort of an onboarding screen. It's going to be similar to what we just created, but we'll just click on the plus sign and call this onboarding screen. So the reason why you do this screen a lot of time is to just show users when um, to show users what your app really do that's the reason why you're making use of this screen to show a user what your app really does so i'm going to move the screen this way i'm going to take this on body screen this way and what i just want to do is that i want to put a slider that's the only thing i'll do i just put a slider and uh, this slider yeah is going to be images that you've designed already in a in a maybe canva or maybe adobe photoshop or maybe any of the graphic design too that's what it's going to be so if i click on the plus sign and i and i'm going to screw down i'm going to say installed uh we'll talk about all this later in subsequent classes this is what i want an image slider i'm going to put it here why because your your onboarding screen is an image uh, it's majorly going to be images. You don't want to be you don't want to be sliding test. It's going to be like it's going to be maybe a two D image or a three D image that tells the customer this is what our app does. This is what our app can do, and also this particular kind of screen to 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 reduce the the to reduce the workflow in your application. You can use this same screen, this same screen, the onboarding screen, and as your as your um home as your welcome screen also. It doesn't have to be different. You can use this screen as your home screen. So if I was going to do this, if I was going to do this for, for a client and I want to use this same screen as my home screen, this is what I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it like, like this. I'm going to go to my styles. I'll screw down and I'll say background color. I'll choose the same background color, make it like this. So remember, this is going to be an image, right? This is going to be an image in the middle. And then I'll click on the plus sign right there. I'll look for a button. I'll just drag a button right there that says login. So this button is going to be in the middle and I'm going to say login. I'll cancel and I'll just say, um, I'll say login. That's what I'll say. Because uh, some, some of my users will be returning users. And I'll say login. Then I will duplicate. I'll duplicate my, my um, forgive me. I'll say login, yeah. Then I could screw down. I could uh, I could screw down and you know change anything I want to change, like remove the shadow, uppercase, round. But that's not really my business right now. I'll duplicate it. You can press um, Ctrl C, just like you do with Microsoft Word. Ctrl C and Ctrl V. That will duplicate stuff. And you can hold Shift to so just drag it down. Yeah, you can hold Shift to drag it down very well. So uh, for this other one, I'm just going to write sign up. That's what I write, and then this one I'm going to send outline button. Uh, yeah, an outline button. That's what I'm going to say. But let me look for let me look for a test button. Change the color of the test, right? Change the color of the test to white. Yeah. So I could say this is login and this is sign up. Or I could uh, click on the login back again. Um, Uh, button color I'll say white so uh, you can see what I'm doing so the button color I just change it to white and the inner color the inner color shouldn't be black the test color should be my background color like so and that's it why this other one is same thing so um, but it's so the call to action button is for people to log in which is supposed to be the reverse so what we've done right now is just some sort of a mistake the the login button is supposed to have the blue background because that's the major thing we want them to see and the uh sign up button is supposed to have the 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 white background so then I, my, my image will just be here and so users can just 
splash using can go through my image just like so I can add image from here or I can add it from my database I can add it from here I can add it from my database I can simply just upload like three four images and just add it so that's the way I'll do it the reason why I'm doing it that way like I said before is to reduce the number of time it's gonna take my, I mean the number of swaps my users have to make before making use of my application and for my logo I can put my logo somewhere on top if I want to I can put my logo somewhere on top it's fine make it a bit small put it somewhere on top and make sense um, you know just make sense out of it then uh, remember one uh, most of the classes we've had on Adalo before I've told you that if you want to the Adalo app depends on three things there's a the database there is a the logic and there is the UI screens there is the screens the screens that's where we are right now there's no database you've seen we've not touched any database then have we done anything called logic we've not done anything so for this um, screens to make sense what you want to do is that I want to click on the login sign and say when the user click on the login sign we want you to go to a particular screen which is the one want you to go to a particular screen so I'll cl scroll down click on the add action so that's what Adalo calls it Adalo calls it action I'll say link to my login screen then when you click on the sign up <coughs> click on the sign up I'll add an action I'll say link to my sign up screen so if we go ahead and click on the preview yeah. Don't forget, if you have a question, you can always drop it in the chat. If you go ahead and and um, click a preview, click the preview button. You see what's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> sorry, this is our onboarding screen, so uh, we've not changed it. It's meanwhile, it's beautiful, right? So we'll go back. Let's change this now to our onboarding screen, to our screen welcome screen. So this is our welcome screen. We just change it like so. So we'll click on the preview again. It's gonna show the next screen that we just created. So you can see we have the login, we have the sign up. So the reason why we don't have the slider here is because there is no image on the slider. So if I click on the sign up screen, see what happens? It goes to this screen. If I say I already have an account, it goes to the login screen. I hope you're seeing. If I say forget password, all these are being configured by Adalo. Forget password, it goes to this screen. Cancel password, cancel forget password, it goes back all over again. So you can see the way it works, super slick and super easy. So uh, let's go ahead and set up our database. Remember, every learning management system have, um, you know, you need to, the database is super straightforward, super straightforward. You have categories of courses, and then you have courses itself. Categories of courses might be courses on digital marketing, might be courses on UI, UX. So you just have tons of courses with categories, and then you have the courses that belong to those categories. And how do you combine categories and courses? You do so via relationship. So database, if you create your relationship in your database very well, you should be able to combine things seamlessly without any headache. Um, so uh, what course would you like us to create? Uh, what course category would you like to, us to create? If you if you if you want to make suggestions, you can put it on the on the put it on the chat section, and I'll do well to create your course with that category. Um, so I'm moving forward. I'm going to click on database, so you can see database right here. I'll click on it, and I want to add a collection. That's what that dialog calls table. That's what that dialog calls table or database. It calls it table. So I'm going to say add collection. For this, I'm going to say category course category that's what I'm gonna call my first collection I'm gonna call my first collection course category course category and I'll say add then for my category I'm going to add some category so we have category name the next thing we're gonna have is image <clears throat> we're gonna write add, add, I'm gonna call this cover photo category cover photo I'm gonna call this like so say save and then after the uh, we have name we have cover photo what else should we have um it's fine we don't have to, we don't need anything else just picture you demi when you're creating something like this you demi this is how you demi is you demi is just categories and tons of courses in categories and it displays everything in a repeating list that's what you demi is trust me you demi is nothing short of that you let me comprise of lots of courses with categories and lots of courses inside most of those categories or sub 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 categories and then when you purchase when you purchase it gives you access to that category that's what you demi does nothing else that's just the bottom line every other thing is just 
every other thing is just secondary but that's the basic thing that Udemy does so we're going to add another collection and we'll call it courses so we'll call it courses okay okay um frank says it's going to have categories it's going to have curriculum in modules and we're going to have uh units okay that's fine <coughs> that's fine um, but for this time, for the sake of this course, we will not uh, be dealing with modules. But it's still the same thing, really. It's the same uh, scenario. It's just the same thing. So the way it's going to be is that a, a category will have a lot of courses, and courses will have modules, and modules will have units. That's what it is. So when a user is creating their courses, you would ask them to create a module, ask them they want to create a new module, and then when, when they've created the module, you ask them they want to create a new course. But really, it's just the same thing. What you're doing is that you're building relationship, relationship, relationship. So for our courses, our courses will have a name. Yeah? Our courses will have names. That's one thing. Then our courses will have course photo. Yeah? Course cover photo. Yeah, save. Then our course. Then um, for course cover photo, our course. Those are the two things that our courses will have. So you can see it's the same thing. Courses and category, they are the same thing. Then remember that our courses too will also have uh, uh, units, right? I hope you're getting me. So we have categories, we have um, courses. Then we have units. So we're going to add another collection, and we'll call it unit. Unit. So this comprises of. Um, courses in our uh, units in our courses so just think of it like um, just imagine it you're peeling an onion the top onion bulb is the category yeah the when you peel again you find the courses and when you peel again you find the units so just think of it that way don't it shouldn't be too complicated you've taken you've taken courses on um, Okay, for example, when you go to YouTube and you search digital marketing, you will see tons of playlists. Yeah, think of it like your YouTube playlist. Yeah, think of it like so. When you, click, when you go to your YouTube channel, just think of your channel as the category. Then think of your playlist as the courses, right? Then your playlist then have a lot of videos inside of it. Just think of those videos as your units. That's, what, that's the way you should think of it. So don't forget, if you have questions, you can always ask me. So uh, for the units, the first thing we want to do is that we want to add unit title. Unit title. Uh, people, just a minute, I'll answer your question. Just a minute. So we want to have unit title. That's the first thing we want to have. Say save. Then the next thing we want to have unit video. So for the video, we'll just call it test because we're going to be using a link. So we'll say unit video. You you You... You do well when you're building with a Dalo. You do well not to, I repeat, not to upload videos. <laughs> Your app will crash. I'm telling you the truth. Do not upload videos. Instead, what you should do is that, what you should do is that you should use an API. What the API would do is that when you upload the video on a Dalo, it will send it to AWS. That's the best way to do it. If you send it to AWS or send it to a Google Drive or send it to YouTube and then you will call back that video link to your application. You don't want your application to be very slow. I repeat, whenever you're doing something very heavy, do not upload it to Adalo. It's not a very good development process. Instead, upload it to another database that's meant for storing data. There are lots of free data databases out there. One of the most popular ones you can use is, is Amazon S3. Uh, yeah, Amazon is quite expensive. People say it's quite expensive, yes. You can even upload it to Dropbox if you want to. Amazon is, is a bit expensive to get started with, but a good place to start with if you're doing a client, if you're working with a client, is YouTube. YouTube is hard. You are right. YouTube is very hard. <laughs> very hard because you have to start uploading the videos to YouTube first. Then take the link and bring it back to your application. That's why YouTube is hard. But if you're going to be doing it via Amazon, if your client can pay, or you personally, you can pay, you have resources to pay Amazon, like maybe $10, $20 a month or $30 a month, what you can do is that you can ask the users to upload their videos as a file. To, as a file yeah? When they are uploading it, it will not stick to your application. What's going to happen is that it will go, your app will send it 
via your own your own data is to send it to AWS or any other database. And then when it gets to AWS, it will tell you that it has finished uploading. When it gets to AWS, then your app again, you will then use the same app to call that video file back to your application. So you there are two things. One of them, if you program, you understand what I'm saying. One of them is the post request, yeah? Post request. That's what one of them is called. Post meaning, just think of it like a post, you're going to a post office to post a letter somewhere. And then think of the other one. The other one, when you're getting it back, it's called a get request. That's what it's called. So that's what you'll be doing most time. You'll be sending a post request and doing a get request back. Okay, AWS, it's Amazon Web Service. That's what AWS, it's called Amazon Web Service or Amazon Cloud Service. You can say cloud, you can say web. So it's a, think of it like as a large memory card where you can store things online and get it back as fast as possible. I think just think of it that way. It's a cloud storage where you can store stuff. It's not like they're really in the cloud, funny enough. They are still in some hard drive somewhere in the U.S., Oregon mostly. Mostly, I think most um, AWS servers are in Oregon. So it's just uh, a space where you will send if, uh, send stuff from your phone or send stuff from your PC or send data that you have in your application. You send it there and get it back whenever you need it. Uh, majority of the things you use online, they use AWS. Like Jumia, I'm pretty sure they, they, they use, they're either using, you can check this out later, they're either using like DigitalOcean or they're using AWS or they're using Microsoft Azure or they're using um, Google, What's the one for Google? Um, I can't remember. Google Cloud. I think that's that's what it's called. Google Cloud. Or oh, they're using uh, Barracuda. So they are, these are just memory cards. Just think of them as big memory cards that you have online. Uh, people, you said, if you're building an e-commerce store, would it be the same process? It's very, very similar process. Once you know the basics, once you know the basics, the, the other processes become very similar. For example, if, you, if you're building an e-commerce store and you're, you're saying um, you have different categories and maybe you have electronics categories, inside your electronic categories, probably you're going to have like laptops, phones, and inside your phones, you're going to have plenty brand of phones. So it's the same way you're going to do it. It's the same principle. It's not going to change anytime soon. So, um, so we have our unit title, we have our unit video, and then we have our duration. So we'll say duration will be uh, time, date or time, but just um, leave it like so, duration, just say number, it's fine, duration, our duration would be a number, say save. Then what else should our unit have? We have the title, we have the unit, uh, unit video, we have the duration. Uh, if you have suggestions, let me know. I think I think that's those are the most common things we see in our in our uh, course application, and in, in our when we are taking courses online. So once we are done with creating these three things, the next thing we want to do we want to create relationship between all of it. Remember we said it's like a, it's like an onion that when you once you peel one you're going to see another one. You peel one you're going to see another one. So what we'll do is that we'll create a relationship between course categories and courses. There are three different types of relationship in every database. There is many-to-many -many relationship. There is one-to-one, one-to-one to many relationship, and there is many-to-one. So I'm going to repeat it again. There is many-to-many -many relationship. There is one-to-many relationship, and there is many-to-one. Think of it. Let's see it this way, yeah? When, when you are, when you're going, when, um, what's the easiest explanation to use now? I want to explain many-to-many -many relationship. Um... Okay, think of it like when you're using Instagram, right? You're using Instagram and you want to like, you know you're always liking stuff on Instagram. If you go, if you use Instagram a lot, I don't. But if you use Instagram a lot, you'd see that you're always liking people's stuff. And people can like yours back. So that's the, that's the many-to-many -many relationship. Considering the fact that you can like so many people and so many people can like you back. But you see the one that has to do with sending messages. Messages are like one-to-many relationship. You can, you can... How does it work is that how, how that works is that one person can send you many persons can send you messages, but you can only send messages to one person at a time. But as we go, we will see the way the way this works. But if we bring it to what we are currently building, you will see that a category will a course will have one category, while a category can have many courses. 
when you get me right for example if you when you have frank listed digital marketing courses right a digital marketing course can have xeo it can have uh, paid advertisement can have facebook ads can have many courses under it but one course must belong to one category then if we drill it back back to units you would see that a course can have many units but one unit will have one one unit belongs to one uh, belongs to one course many units belong to one course but a course will have let's say it again a course will have lots of units but a unit will have, belong to one course I hope you're getting me now. So, uh, but if we want to say we want our users to be able to follow each other, then it's going to be many to many relationship. I'll, I'll show you how to do all those as we go. So it's a one hour class. We still have 20 minutes to go. I'm pretty sure we should be done with setting all this in the, within now in the next 10 minutes so you can ask as many questions as possible. So this is how we do it. We click on add property. Now we want to create relationship between two. We'll click on add property and we'll say relationship. And want to create a relationship with cost categories. So we would say a cost category can have multiple courses. A cost belongs to one one cost category, which is obviously true. But a cost category can only have one cost. A cost can have multiple cost categories, which is wrong. A cost category can have a cost category, a cost can have multiple categories, a cost category can have multiple courses. So think of it this way. There are sometimes, even when you're creating an LMS, this last one really works. Why? Because you can see that marketing, sometimes when you're creating um, a course for marketing, it falls under, another. there's another course that shares similar, similar, they have similarities with marketing. And then you can always, you can, you, you can find that same kind of courses in that same niche also. I don't know if you get me. So you can this many to many relationship can work sometimes, but if you are a beginner and you can't really um, disturb yourself, you don't want to disturb yourself with too many relationship in your application. So click on the first one. A cost category can have multiple courses. Multiple courses can have cost categories. So um, so uh, um, so that's that's so okay. Thank you very much, Frank, for answering him. What's a learning management system? Thank you very much. So that's the first thing we'll do. Then next, next, what we'll do again, we'll create a, we'll create a relationship between units and courses. So we'll click on units. You can click on either, either one of them. It doesn't matter. We'll click on units, say add, add properties, relationship with courses. And you will see a course can, course can have multiple units. A unit belongs to one courses. So this is what I'll pick so we don't waste time. I would say done. And then let's do the other one. If we want our users to be able to follow each other, we want two users to be able to follow each other. So you want to add some sort of a social network field to your application. Or you want two users to be able to like a particular course or vote a particular course so that whenever you're sorting your courses, you can sort it based on the number of upvotes. Yeah? This is the way you go ahead and do it. You will click on the user. You will say add property, you say relationship, and create a relationship with yourself. Because all users are the same in your application. It's just you who's differentiating it. Every user is the same in your application. So you create users with yourself. And you say you would you, create this one. Yeah? A user can have multiple users. A user can have a user can have multiple users. A user can have multiple users. This is the one you create. The reason is because you want two users to be able to follow each other. That's what you want to do. You want two users to be able, you want a particular user to be able to like so many things. And you want one user to be able to like another user. So if you want two users to be able to like themselves, then it's going to be a user can have multiple users. A, mo a user can have multiple users. That's what it's going to be. Yeah? But if you want a user to be able to upvote on something just once, yeah? just once then you would use the first one a user can have multiple users a user belong to one user that's the way you do it just once so this one this particular one you can click on it and just call it upvotes so you're not going to call this one users anymore you just call it upvotes this can be really confusing if you were doing the social media social media app you call it likes this is the same thing that happens on instagram uh, it might be a little bit confusing, but I'm pretty sure if I, I will send you the video again, you watch it all over again, and when you practice, you will see that it's similar. This is what happens on Instagram. I mean, haven't you noticed that once you like something once on Instagram, you can't like it twice? 
you can only like it once you can once if you click it click the button again it unlikes if you click it again it likes so you can like it once you can like it you can only like it just once 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 if you follow a particular person on facebook you can follow the person only once you can't follow the person twice you follow and the next time you click on it again it won't follow that's the same thing that happens here if you like a particular course if you like a particular course you like it it will add to say you've liked it if you don't like it it, it will you will unlike it all over all over again so that's just the way um that's just the way it works when you're running when you're building this so once we do this there are three things that we need users to be able to do we will need users to be able to create create courses yeah thank you very much people thank you very much france you guys are getting it so for when you when you once once you're done with that database what you need is for you need people to be able to create courses you need people to be able to read courses you need people to be able to update courses and you need them to be able to delete courses a good way to structure your application yeah a good way to to balance your application is this uh, I learned this recently myself, and I think it's, not, it's a good, it's a very, very good practice. What you do is that you can create, go to Notion. Notion is a, is an easy, is a, is a, it's just like Microsoft Word. It's just like Microsoft. You can use anything for this, but I, I like Notion because it's super cool, it's super easy. So when you're building an application for yourself, or you're building an application for your client, and you don't want to get super confused, you don't want to get confused about what you've done and what you've not done. What you can do is that you go to, um, so I just went to Notion, and uh, I'm just going to click, on, I'm going to add a new space right here. You can, it's easy, trust me, Notion is easy to use. It's not very complicated. So I'm going to add, I'm going to just click on a plus sign right here, and I want to add something called a to-do list. No, no, okay, not a to-do list. Let me go find something called a uh should i call it to do list not a table not a bullet point okay let me let me say it to do a toggle no not a toggle list forgive me not a toggle list let me click on the plus sign again forgive me let me click so, so what I'm just trying to tell you is that, first of all, when you're creating your application, you have to figure out a way to list everything you need your application to do. Then you start doing it one after the other. So let me see if this is, if this works. This, oh, this is to-do list. It's not going to work. Click on the plus sign and, um, okay, I'll just, let me just create another page. Just follow me. Let me create another page and say plus and see if it's gonna work. I'm looking for a database, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. So you create a board, so it's called a board view. This right here, it's called a board. That's what you create. It's called a board and you would say, uh, just one, the first one would have development. So this is just by the wayside. The first one will have development, yeah? The first one will have development. The second one will have the first one will have development, the second one will have what you're doing, and the other one will have what you've done. So what you'll be doing is that you just keep on moving one board to another, one board to another board, one board to another board. I don't know why this guy is just, I don't know what was wrong, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you, This right here, you will give it the name of the app. That's what you give it, name of the app. Name of the app, and then for for the stage right here, you just click all the things you want to do. Probably the first thing is that you want to add the login button. And the next one, you want to add the sign up button. And probably the next one, you want to, you want to add the create record button. So you see the way it works. So once you are, once you are done, the next, okay, this is the, this, this right here. The first thing here is the, um, is the development. Right here, we'll say this one is the doing. So we'll just call this doing. So just things just like tiny project management then we we'll say done or launch so like so so it's just like tiny project management because if you decide to do everything at once you just get tired you won't be able to do everything at once so if i'm done with the login screen if i'm doing if i'm fixing the login screen right there i'll say doing if i'm done i just move it to done so if before you know it if you have like 
you could sometimes when you're building an application, you can have like 50 screens. You can have like 50 things that you want to do. And it's going to be super confusing for you. So if you decide to do all 50 at once, it's going to be really confusing. But if you decide to follow this principle, you can do, you can tell yourself, I'm going to do five every day. And you then you'll be able to estimate that at the end of five days, I'll be able to finish my application. If you decide to do that with all 10 days, I'll be able to finish my application. But if you decide to say, I'm going to do everything at once, you're just going to be with that application for a lifetime. You're not going to finish it. You're going to be there for 20 years. You won't finish it because you won't do everything at once. So this is by the wayside. Let's go back to our application again. So let's go back to our application. So um, the first thing, next thing we want, like I said we want to do, we want to do three things. Create record, read record, update record, and delete record. So uh, I'll just move this over here. So I click on the plus screen, click on the add screen, and click on the empty screen. I can click on the bar, it's fine. I would say create lectures. Yeah, create lectures, click on the create, create screen. Then it's going to ask me what I'm, then I'm going to input a form here. Because when you're creating something, you want to add a form. That's the way you create stuff. I'm going to click on the plus sign and just tell myself, and just click on the word form here. Drag it to the screen, put it right there. Put it right there. Just drag it on the screen and say put it right there. And it's going to ask you what type of form is it going to be. I would say it's going to be a list of courses. It's going to be a list of courses or a list of units. So units, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's going to be a list of units. I want people to be able to create units. So watch what's going to happen. So if I say units, you see this, the, the form on the left automatically changes and shows me all the feed that I have there. Unit title, unit video, and duration. For duration, I don't have to add it. I can call this one manually in the background if I want to. Uh, it's fine. But one thing I want you to see is that why we created a relationship, this is where it's going to work. Yeah? If we click on the, plot, on the feed sign, it's going to ask you, do you want to add this one? So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to, I'm going to add some automatic, uh, visible feed. Click on the add visible feed. I'm going to add the course to it. The reason is because... Um, uh, the reason is because units have relationship with courses. That is the reason. So if, if it doesn't have relationship with courses, then it's not going to work. The reason is because units have relationship with courses, and that's why. So um, this, so we can see course, we can see unit title, we can see unit unit video, and we can see duration. Hope you're getting me. So whenever a user, a user is entering data here, the user will have to choose what's the course, we'll have to choose what the unit is it, we'll have to choose what's the video, and we'll have to choose the duration. Then we can click on it and say we want to add, you can add the automatic feed, it doesn't matter, automatic feed like what time the course was created, who created the course, those are, uh, we're not going to talk about that now because it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really matter at all. So once, once we're good with this, before we can see, before this list of courses can show, we have to go back to our database and really add list of courses. So right here, we can see zero records, so we can't see anything. So we'll click on the courses, say add course, and we'll say this course here is digital marketing. Let's just say this is, um, okay, introduction. Introduction to no code. Hope we don't extend this a little bit. Introduction to no code. I'll click on the course cover. I'll click on the course cover. So I'm just going to add a, I'm going to find any cover and just add. So I'm going to add this. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm going to add this. Okay, file type is invalid. Need to, need to add a JPEG. I'm looking for a file to add. Um, okay, I'm just going to add this one. I'll wait for it to upload first. Then I'll click on the cost category. There's no cost category right here. I've not created any cost category, so hence the reason why I can create it. So I'll just go. There's no unit here, so I can't add unit. No, I can't. So I'll say save. I'll say done. So if I go to my cost category, I'll add... I can add record and just add the particular cost category that I want, but it's fine. So this is what we'll do. Let's just let's just click for the sake of this class. Let's just click on the plus sign. I know we are almost 
almost going almost uh <laughs> it's almost eight o'clock so probably we can do the part two of this next week so i'll click on the plus sign put it right here i just want to show you how things go from one screen to another and uh i'll say create courses that's what i'll write create courses one thing that you see here is that you can see that this the, the button the button take the Take the color of the top menu. By a lot of time, you don't want this to happen. You want it to be the opposite. So you want it. You want your button to take the opposite. Yeah, you know? like maybe something like so. You know, take the opposite. You don't want it to be the same with the with the dominant color in your application. You want it to be the opposite. So I want to say create courses. Take away the plus and just leave it like so at the middle. Then I want to add an action. So I just add an action. Say link to create create lectures. So I just wanted to see what what, what happens. So then uh, I'll go to my my form right here, my form right there. Hit on the submit button, and you can see it's saying create unit. So when when your user click on this, it creates the unit. But what happened after that? Click on the action. Just tell it to link back to the former screen. Link back to the former screen. Yeah. You, that's what you do. Just link back to the former screen. That's all. And then when 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 you link back to the format screen, you cannot tell, hello, you've successfully created a unit, hello, you know, stuff like that. Or you can click on the plus sign right here. Let's just add a, add a little bit, put, put it right here. And um, put it right here, the plus sign. I just click on the plus sign. Uh, hello, Frank. So I'm going to say, hello, Mercy. Um, this is hello mercy, but you do, we're not going to use the mercy. The mercy is going to come dynamically from the database. Uh, what do you want to create today? Want to create today? So we'll, we'll, the way we're thinking this application is that we're thinking as a two-side application. One side of the application have a, have a course creator side, and the other part have a student side. So if Mercy had signed up as a course creator, then this is the screen that she would see. But if she had signed up as a student, then she wouldn't see any of this information. She would see a different screen entirely. But as we go on using Adalo, we will see how this works. And, um, you know, we can create exciting things with Adalo. This how it works. So where, where we have Mercy, I'm going to remove it. Yeah, see what I'm going to do. So it comes dynamically from the database because every user's name would not be Mercy. Yeah, so we'll click on the plus sign and we'll say logged in user's full name or username or name, anyhow you want to call it, it's fine. So we'll say logged in user's name, hello username, what do you want to create? In the, what do you want to create today? So remember, when we when uh, when our users are signing up, they have email, they have password, they have full name, but no username. So what we'll do is that we'll click right here. Just follow me. I'm I want to round up as fast as possible. We'll click right there. Click on the visible feed and say username. So we just added username to it. So then we'll go back to our. Uh, 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 I want to go back to the preview screen now. Click on the preview. Just watch me as everything come 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 into one place. Click on the preview now, and um, click on the sign up. Then I'm just going to put my name. I'm going to put uh, Paul.Okodora at no code for the five.co. Um, my password is going to be Paul. My full name is Paul Okodora. Then my username is Paul. So I click on sign up. So what's going to happen? So, uh, so you can see right here it says, Hello, Paul. What do you want to create today? So what that what that, what happens there is that it came dynamically from the database and not from anywhere else. So then when I create on the create courses, when I create on the I've clicked on the create courses, you can see it took me back to the screen where I could select my course. I could add my unit title. I could say introduction to introduction to uh, marketing. Then I can add the video. This video can be a YouTube video. I can add a good. I can add a YouTube video, a Vimeo video. This YouTube can be any video of your choice from, from uh, just from online. So let me just look for a YouTube video. Uh, meanwhile, you can check out our YouTube channel. <clears throat> it's called uh, Paul No Code. We'll definitely soon be renaming it to No Code Forty Five. But just go check out our YouTube channel. You'll find some of these courses in our YouTube channel. Um,
I'm gonna find okay, yeah, just pull no code. So if you type pull no code right there, you'll be able to find tons of courses. So you'll be able to find lots of courses right there. Uh so you can I'm gonna pick this one. This was the this is the, the tutorial we did last time. I'm pretty sure you find it very useful. So I'm gonna just paste the unit video right here and say the duration is ten minutes. So because it's duration it's a number, so I won't be able to I can't write anything called number. I'm missing my keypad right now. I can't add numbers to it, so I'm gonna say create unit. So once I create unit, you see it goes back, right? It goes back to the to the screen itself. And then once it goes back, we'll go back to if once we go, it goes back to the screen, what means is that it has entered our database and we can do anything we want with that data. So if I click on database, go back to my unit, you see one record added, right? Click on it, you can see unit title, introduction to marketing, video, the one for YouTube, duration, courses, and creator, and when it was created. And if I want to add put that, if I want to add put, if I want to bring that into my application, into my application, what I can do is that I can just click on the plus sign and add a video. So I could say, I'm not sure if I can add a video from here. I can't add a video from here. So I can click on the plus sign. And what I'll do is that I'll display a list of all those courses for a participant. Uh, I'll display a list of all those courses for a participant. And when the participant click on it, then they can view all the videos that belong to that courses and they can start watching it one after the other. So that's basically, um, let's just call this the part one. So by next week, by next week, you'll be able to we'll continue from here. I wouldn't touch any, I wouldn't touch anything. I wouldn't touch the screen at all. By next week, we'll continue from here and I'll show you how to finish this application. I'm making a full fledged LMS application by next week. So I want to say thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you so much for joining. It's we've a short our time already. If you have questions, leave it in the chat section and I'll do well to answer your question within now and the next five minutes. So if you have a question, leave it. P-Boy, do you have a question? James, do you have a question? If you have a question, leave it. I'll do well to answer you. Okay, I want to say thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen now. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so if you... Okay, James, you have a question? That's fine. Okay, James, go ahead so we can round up as fast as possible. So, okay, how can you make this app live on Play Store? So it's very easy. It's very easy. Once you're done with creating your, your application with Adalo, Adalo comes with a subscription, a monthly subscription. Once you're done with creating your apps, your app with Adalo, so what you can do is that Adalo will help you compile it. So it will give you a compilable APK file. Give you the compile file, give you the applets, and give you give you everything you would need. And all you have to simply do is to upload it on the Play Store for Google to assess the application. That's it. It's as simple. You could do this within five ten minutes. You could get your app on Play Store within five ten minutes with Adalo. That's all you have to do. Adalo will give you the APK file for your iOS and for your Android app. Android app. It's it's really easy. So it's really it's not a very big. It's not a very big deal. I'm pretty sure one of these days I'll do a tutorial on how you can get your app on Play Store. It's not a big deal at all. It's super easy for you to do. But the most important thing is just creating the application. And once you're done creating it, you can put it in the Play Store within 10 minutes. And um, you could give it to Google. So you submit it to the Google Play Store for them to assess the application to know that you're not collecting very sensitive data, you know, stuff. It, it goes through all those processes. And uh, once you're done, you are able to, um, you, viewers are able to see your app on Play Store every time. Um,